The thesis topic I have undertaken is Kutukudambam, a pediatric palliative comfort care center in the city of Kochi, South Chittu. Kutukudambam, a shelter and respite for pediatric palliative care, is an environment with the concept of caring for terminally ill children along with their family members. Now, this project emphasizes palliative care rather than curative treatment. This project is unlike an adult hospice, which is provided comparatively short and end of an adult life. A children's hospice works alongside the family through months or maybe years of care and beyond until death. Now, the aim of my project is to create a comprehensive environment as a relief space for terminally ill children and their families to offer them a way to spend quality time together. The main three objectives are to understand the difference between children palliative care and adults palliative care. Then the second one is to understand the components of healing architecture and palliative architecture. And the final and last one is adopting the theory of Kutukudambam to create a comprehensive environment to solace the children and family. The major components that differentiate a children's palliative care that from of an adult's one. The first one is varying growth of children. The second one, inclusion of the entire family is ultimately necessary. The third one is that response is needed according to the child's ability to understand. And the fourth and the major one is the provision of education and play. Cancer is the second largest disease that has affected millions of Indians and is projected to rise fivefold by 2025. 12 lakh new cancer patients are rising every year, of which 1.6 to 4.8% are children. Now, Kerala is the only state that provides palliative care in all districts through government and NGO participants. The Kerala network has more than 60 units covering a population of greater than 12 million and is one of the largest networks in the world. Now, there is a need to understand the journey of a pediatric cancer patient, and that is why I have done the journey mapping here. And also, I have studied about the components of the pediatric palliative care. While designing for children, there are certain aspects that we have to look upon. They include seclusion, exploration, the teenagers needs attention, tactile experience, the scale of the space needs to be for them. The user group had to be divided into three. That is, first we have the infant, young toddlers, that is between one month to two years. Next, we have the children of two years and 12 years. And next, we have the adolescents or the teenagers who are from 12 years to 16 years. So that is the major user group in my project. In order to acquire more knowledge regarding a hospice, I have studied eight different case studies. The first three literature case studies are day centers, which includes Maggie's Cancer Caring Center at Dunde by architect Franco Gehry with his signature form development. The second one is Maggie's Cancer Caring Center at Fife by architect Zaha Hadid, which stands overlooking a hollow landscape with direct visual access from the entry itself to the landscape. The third one is Maggie's Cancer Center in Glasgow by architect Rem Kulas, where instead of creating isolated rooms, the building is designed as a sequence of interlocked L-shaped figurines. The main reason why I have selected these three case studies is solely because of an idea that came into my mind when I proposed this thesis topic to the thesis panel. These case studies have a kitchen-centric connectivity, both in spaces and in human interaction. The next two literature case studies act solely as children's hospice and they are residential type without day centers. Now the first one, the Robin House Children's Hospice by architect Gareth Hoskins has a play court centric planning with ultimate focus on interior lighting. Noah's Ark Children's Hospice by Squire and Partners has a long nave that acts as the main gathering space with a butterfly planning. Kairunasra Hospice at Bangalore by architect Sanjay Mohe is one of the three light case studies I have studied. He oriented all the wards towards the east so everyone will have a rising sun experience bringing more positivity into their life. The activities were focused around the water body. The wards have been uniquely designed with nurses having direct visual access of the patients visiting the toilet. But this was an issue raised by the staff as they can't stay longer at the nurse's station due to the smell from the toilet. 
The second live case today is Shanti Avedana at Mumbai by architect Judy Sambare, which is the first hospice care in India. The third live case today is Happy Feet Home at Mumbai, which is the India's first and only children's hospice with day center alone. The children there are so playful and I never even heard them talk about their illness as they were too busy interacting with their friends. But it broke my heart to see Apina, who is an 11-year-old cancer resident at Karanasra back in Bangalore, who seems so stiff among the adult residents. I saw it there right itself, how inevitable it is to design a hospice for children alone. I have compared various aspects of the case studies I did and have come to conclusion of how and how not a children's hospice should be. Then I charted out the area programming from case studies and standards. And this flow chart shows the proximity importance of various functions. I have prepared some important notes to be taken care of while designing the space as well. The site is situated in the district of Ernagulam in the city of Kochi, South Chetu, Cheranalu, Panchayat. The landmark being Astra Medicity Hospital with direct access from the Kuti Sahib Road from the nearest National Highway NH47. So the site resides as a plot next to the Astor Medicity Hospital. This brown color region depicting the site boundary is the proposed 9.46 acre site for my thesis topic, Kotikonabam, a pediatric palliative comfort care center. Here is the Astor Medicity Hospital on the northern side of the site with direct access from the Kutisahe Bureau. And here we have the service block on the western side Next to that, we have an unused gate accessible by the community. The community over here has a playground area and it is the only entertainment ground nearby. Activities such as badminton, cycling, and all that takes place here, as you can see in this picture. Right next to the playground, the blue colored region is a swamp with the rich biodiversity and many birds visiting from time to time. The picture showing that is over here. Over here, we have another entry which is unused by the community. This region, as I have observed on site, is the only pocketed region which is hidden from the community with swamp and dense vegetation right nearby. Near to the near river edge, we have another entry. So totally, there are three entry points to the site which is used by the community. Another observation is this direct visual access from this street road to the river edge, which I found to be exciting as the community still has a glimpse of the river edge. Now moving on to the site, the factors that grabbed my attention is the existence of a well-seasoned pungalium tree or otherwise called the tree of heaven right at the northern side of the site and also two grown mango trees at an inclined axis to the pungalium tree. The site is oriented linearly in the east-west direction giving possibilities to play with sun direction. On the east we have unobstructed view towards the Kota river and dense ecosystem beyond that without any visible building lines. The design builder began from the site and site context. The ultimate thought process was to connect the children, their family and other inhabitants to the existing unbuilt characters on site which would effectively elevate a sense of belonging for all of them. Through site analysis, I came across three notable issues on site. The first one being the existence of a swamp right in front of the community playground, which is used by the people for activities such as playing badminton, cycling, and all that. And also there is an unused gate access, which makes it feel like kind of like an unplanned backdoor entry gate. The second one is that rather than treating the community as a background builder, there is a possibility of connecting the community to the river edge through one way or another. The third major issue is that during rainy season, the swamp water rises engulfing a major portion of the community playground and also enters into the site. The two major moves that I have done in the beginning to tackle these thought processes. The first one is to have an axis connecting the community and the river edge. Now this axis connects the inhabitants outside of the site towards the site context. Now on the site, I have spotted the Pungalian tree or otherwise known as the tree of heaven on the northern side, which possesses great medicinal value and also can help to connect the inhabitants emotionally to the site. And there are two fully grown mango trees which would make one feel right at home. I created an axis connecting these unbuilt characters on site and this axis connects the inhabitants towards the site. Now there are two axes, one which connects the inhabitants towards the site and the other one which connects the 
inhabitants outside of the site. Now talking about the general concept, when the child gets sick, they need to go to an institutional facility for physical recovery. But these are kids that we are talking about and an institutional facility cannot relieve them of the pain unless they feel right at home to have that mental recovery. The children need to be close with their family, their siblings. And this is exactly what made me think about the age old system of Kutukudumbam or otherwise known as the joint family or extended family system where multiple families come together and in this togetherness finding solis sharing their problems with each other who are going through the same and comforting each other now the joint family system was facilitated by the nilekata which enabled enough breathing space for more than 30 families incorporating all these ideas into the zoning first we have the public zone or in nilekata language we call it the pumukam here I have zoned the administration, the classrooms and the day centers where working parents with sick children can drop off and pick up. Centrally, we have the open courtyard or Nadumutam, which can incorporate a large gathering for important events like birthdays or graduation. Now to know more about what these children really need, I spent a day with Dr. Ram Kumar, who is a pediatrician specialized in pediatric palliative care in Asya Medicity Kochi itself. Now he mentioned something so sensitive that we usually ignore in such facilities. Dr. Ram Kumar I know a patient in the story baranyo. Oru padinna vayasulla kutti eda story ana. A kutti ki blood cancer ayirunu. Idella arinja parents ennallam ellarum frustrated ayirunu. But curable ayittulla oru disease ayirunu doctors or parents nor advise edu. Parents especially kutti in hospital etta chigalsikkan thayaralla ayirunu. So home care annalla reethiyilla kutti na veetilottu kondu poi avadu vachu care cheya annalla reethiyilla ay avaru. ഈ കുട്ടി എല്ലാ രീതിയിലും സ്കൂളിലായാലും എക്സ്ട്രാ കരിക്കുലർ ആക്ടിവിറ്റീസിലും നല്ല രീതിയിൽ ടാലൻ്റഡ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു ആക്റ്റീവ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു കുട്ടിയായിരുന്നു സോ ഷീ വാസ് ആക്ച്വലി ബ്രേവ് ഇത് ആ കുട്ടീനെ അധികം എഫക്റ്റ് ചെയ്തില്ല അവൾ സ്റ്റിൽ വാസ് സോ ആക്റ്റീവ് ബട്ട് അവരുടെ പാരൻസ് എല്ലാം ഓർത്തഡോക്സ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു ഫാമിലി ആയിരുന്നു അവർ മെഡിസിൻസിനോട് കൂടുതൽ കോൺസെൻട്രേറ്റ് ചെയ്ത് ദൈവത്തോട് കോൺസെൻട്രേറ്റ് ചെയ്യാൻ സോ എന്നായിട്ട് അവർ ലൈക്ക് എന്തിന് എൻ്റെ മോക്കിങ്ങനെ കൊടുത്തു എന്തിന് എൻ്റെ മോക്കിങ്ങനെ ഒരു അസുഖം കൊടുത്തു എന്ത് തെറ്റ എൻ്റെ മോള് ചെയ്ത് എന്നുള്ള രീതിയിലൊക്കെ ഡെയിലി അവർ പ്രാർത്ഥിച്ചു തുടങ്ങാനൊക്കെ തുടങ്ങി സോ ഈ ഒരു മെൻ്റൽ സ്ട്രെസ് അവളുടെ പാരൻസിൻ്റെ എന്ന് അവൾ കണ്ടപ്പോൾ ഷി കുഡൻ ഹാൻഡിൽ ഇറ്റ് അവസാനം ആ കുട്ടി സൂയിസൈഡ് ചെയ്തു സോ ദ വെൻ ദ ചൈൽഡ് ഗെറ്റ് സിക്ക് ദ റേറ്റ് ഓഫ് പോസിബിലിറ്റി ഓഫ് ദം ബീങ് ക്യൂർഡ് ഇസ് മോർ ഇഫ് ദ പാരൻസ് ആർ സ്ട്രോങ് എനഫ് ടു സപ്പോർട്ട് ദ ചൈൽഡ് മെൻ്റലി വൺസ് ദ ചൈൽഡ് സീസ് ദ പാരൻസ് സാഡ് ഇസ് വെൻ ദ ചൈൽഡ് സ്ലിപ്സ് ഇൻ ദ ഡിപ്രഷൻ സോ ദർ ഇസ് എ നീഡ് ടു ഡിസ്ട്രാക്ട് ദ പാരൻസ് ആസ് വെൽ So, that kutti marichada cancer o andalla, depression ko andana. Thinking about that, children are really picky eaters, especially when they are sick. And that's how I came about the concept of creating a kids-friendly kitchen and dining experience with baking corners, ice cream corners, and all that. Now, here the parents can teach the children to cook or even the other way around, and possibly distracting them of all the tension. And I have zoned it around the mango tree, which gives it more of a homely feel. The occupancy units are zoned towards the east, so they will have a sunrise experience every morning into their bedrooms, providing more positive energy. The service area is zoned on the southwest side with connection with the existing service road itself. This facility also possesses a bereavement support, which is placed further away with more respectful and peaceful environment. and there is a swamp in this area as well so it will be hiding it from the immediate community there is also an existing entry through this side so the people use so i have zoned a community wellness center and community boating service over here the community wellness center acts as a flexible space with possibility of conducting exhibitions and selling the creations of children to the community raising awareness and individuality moving on to the design This is a swamp that fills up with water during rainy season. In order to protect the site from water, I have provided dikes along this line at a height of 1.2 meters. So the dikes are provided with vetiver plant which is a medicinal plant where its roots can grow up to 1 meters protecting from soil erosion and water retention capacity. But on the other side of the dike we have the seating space for the playground area for the community and also a cycling track for the children of the community. The swamp actually has rich biodiversity with many birds visiting from time to time. 
So I try to incorporate this into the design instead of hiding it. So it was like turning a negative element to a positive feature. So it looks like this where there is a pavilion with steps leading to the swamp and it acts as a small space to escape to. And here we have more pavilions which is, can be used by the inhabitants at a height of one meters and it will provide more visual access of what is going around. On this axis right towards the end we have another pavilion that serves two purposes. As you can see over here on the ground we have a stage with open air theater where some programs hosted by the volunteers from the blind schools or specially able schools can conduct. The reason why I have zoned this pavilion right over here is solely with the purpose of incorporating the community and the inhabitants, possibly merging them. And on the top, we have a viewing deck to have a better view of the Kotard River. And moving on to the design, I have divided the design into four zones solely for the purpose of design legibility and there are no zone division on the actual design as such. So first I'll be talking about zone one. The entry to the building is amidst the tree of heaven with both stairway and ramp considering the wheelchair entry that is shown in this image over here. Underneath the tree there is a small stage where the musicians will be playing and this will act as a focal point for the people waiting at the launch area and also for the parents at the cafe who have come to drop off their child to the day center. Here we have the administration and staff area facing the lily pond. Next to that we have the VIP launch area who have come to visit the CEO or the director. There are two different office spaces for the CEO and the director with an entry towards the lily pond from their resting area. This is a separate entry for them with separate parking spaces. Here is the boardroom pavilion placed as a separate entity to favor immediate meetings and discussions. This area acts as a place for the nurses to retreat to as they also need an escape room since they are also going through a lot of emotional stress nurturing these sick kids. As you can see in the section down below, this area acts as a cafe and meeting rooms and lounge area for the nurses to come and meet with direct access to the outdoors. The outdoor area visualized in 3D is shown right over here. And on the top, we have the dormitory spaces for the nurses with direct view towards the lounge area. The plan of the dormitory is shown right over here. These sketches shows the first imagination of the space of the nurses' lounge and the boardroom pavilion. Adjacent to the nurses lounge, we have a staff counseling area with a psychologist room attached to it. Psychologist is actually accessible by the other inhabitants coming to this space as well. They can enter through this pathway. Now let's see zone two. This zone is where we have assembled the education and other activities. Once you enter, what you see is an open classroom to this area. This is a staff room area with semi-open boardroom game area over here. Here we have two disabled-friendly classroom spaces with special roofing system enabling plenty of ventilation and natural lighting as you can see in this section over here. This is a sunken indoor playground area which has an inclined view towards the outdoor open playground area. The parents can sit and watch and enjoy what their kids are doing under this pavilion, behind which we have a semi-open art room area and a closed art room area, which is flexible as per the functions organized. And so this is the straight axis which connects to the river edge. Near to this is where I have zone, the music pavilion. It is designed in such an open manner so the family and staff can enjoy the music teaching sessions. Here we have the kids watts and this is close to the river edge. Now the wards are designed in such a way that even if the kid is sleeping on his bed, the parent is given an opportunity to exit out freely without disturbing the kid. So the parents are given a sense of privacy and they can escape out into their launch area where there is provision for TV rooms, laundry, toilets and all that. And also a meditation space for them to escape to whenever they need. The main gathering area for the parents has a straight access towards the river edge as well. Now inside the ward here, we have the nurse's station with direct access towards the play court and the storytelling pavilion. This storytelling pavilion is designed so the parents or any volunteers just can come in and tell stories 
or play with the kids. And this is a special toilet and bathroom area for the patient kids. You can see clearly in this inmate, this is a patient ward and they have direct access towards the river edge. Now we are going to talk about zone 3. This is where we have the kitchen area with mango trees centering it. Inside we have baking corners and ice cream corners with sunken TV rooms over to this end. So while they cook, they can even have the access towards the TV rooms. There is also a separate staff only kitchen area at this end. From the kitchen, you can enter out towards the mango trees with outdoor seating spaces on the sides. And you, you can enter into the greenhouse space right over here. This greenhouse area acts as an additional distraction for the parents where they can grow their own plants and nurture them. This is a hydrotherapy room for the patients with changing rooms over here and the rest of the therapy rooms over here. And here we have the teenager's room on the ground floor area. They have direct access towards the open library room over to this end and also to the meditation space over here. The teenager space has a gaming room with 24-hour psychologists available to them. Now on the top floor of this space, we have the single occupancy units. And this single occupancy units have a direct view towards the Kothar River. The single occupancy room is actually designed as a flexible space where the bedroom can be actually converted. So if the child needs privacy, it can be made into two different bedroom area or if the child does not require privacy, it can be made as a single bedroom area with the parents occupying them. From the bedroom, they can access the open terrace with direct view towards the Kothar River. And at the very end of this building line, we have the double occupancy rooms. And these doors are designed in such a way that even the bedrooms can be rolled out towards this veranda space. So the patient, even if the patient is bedridden, they can come out and enjoy the view. Well, here as well, we have a library space for the kids to come and enjoy their books when reading time. And these libraries are designed with indoor and outdoor pocket spaces. So they can sit in these pocket spaces with some quiet time. And also they can access out to the outdoor area. And this outdoor area has a direct access towards this multi-sensory room. Now this whole area which connects these spaces is a walk-in area where there will be trained birds and animals roaming freely. So once you walk in, you can have a close interaction with the nature, animals, as kids would love these creatures. So this image depicts that picture. This is a walk-in experience that they will have. And this is the single occupancy unit on the top floor. And this is the double occupancy on the ground floor with direct access towards the Kothar River. Now let's see the zone four. This is the entire doctor's launch area with consulting room beside it. The doctor's launch area is provided with access towards the outdoor areas. For the consultation room, the patients will be entering through the front portion and the doctors will be entering through the back side. Here we have the service block with services providing for incinerators and laundry rooms. And the bereavement support is placed in the pocketed region as discussed before. This image depicts the picture of the bereavement support. Now talking about the design of the bereavement support, the body is taken in through this room. For the preparation of the body, it is taken to this room. And after preparation, the body is taken out and placed under the circular skylight area. This circular skylight area was actually inspired by the case study I have done at Karunasri at Bangalore. What architect Sanjay Mohe have done is paint the ceilings to look like the sky. What I have done here in the design is that I have given a circular skylight. So the entire room will be dark and light will be coming through this skylight and will be focused on the dear departed. So after saying their goodbyes, the body is taken out through the ambulance to this area. I have applied the skylights and lighting system from this special topic I have done. For my special topic, I wanted to give a more homely atmosphere and intimacy and warmth to my design. So there are three different ways how we can use that. Use of tactile materials, light as an element to infuse warmth and intimacy and implementing the present nature. So light, according to Christian Norberg scholars, light defines Nordic world and infuse all things with mood. Louis Kahn says that light gives all things their presence, where he means to say that light defines the manner of appearance. So what I have done is I have chosen four different lighting elements, reflected light, the dramatic light or the zenith light, 
the twilight and the diffuse light experience. So the reflected light experience is given in the meditation spaces in teenagers' rooms. So here the light will be coming in through this opening and it will be reflecting off of the pond over here. The dramatic light of the zenith light was given in the bereavement support, the circular opening, where the light will be focused on the dear departed. Now the twilight is given in each wards. Now why I have given twilight experience in each ward is solely because of that thought that came into my mind. While the children is lying down after taking medication, why should they lie down and look at the blank ceilings? Why can't they look at the stars or the sky? Why not that? So with that idea in my mind, I have infused openings in wards where the child lying down can actually have a visual access towards the sky. Now the diffuse light system is used in the classroom areas, the kitchen areas, the nurses' dormitories and the doctors' workstations. These models depict the detailed work of the three different wards that I have given. The first one is the double occupancy room, the single occupancy room and the wards. These models depict the influence of my special topic in the design of the wards. Mm -hmm.